You know, money is often the reason why many marriages end in divorce. Our next guest joins us with some important financial tips that might help you make it through the process less painfully. Local money expert J.B. Bryant is back with us today to talk about separating your finances when you're separating as a couple. Thanks for coming in this morning. It's good to be here. Not such a happy topic, no. but it's very helpful. Very it important, helpful. too. And yeah. What was it about maybe 30, 40 years ago that we started hearing prenuptial agreement? People already planned for the end before they even so got true. married but if the marriage ends that's probably you know a good document to have and it is and the biggest point I want to share is that divorce is a marathon not a sprint and that we have to be very careful with each step along the way and don't rely on the lawyer for everything. I was seeing, I was yeah. thinking that maybe this was all be predetermined by the mm -hmm. lawyers and the judge mm -hmm. and everything and that it's Most their guidelines do. and things like that. Most people do and that's a big mistake that they make. We even have to go so far as to look into things like taxation, mm -hmm. you know, that what would, how will this move affect the taxation of the settlement? Um, there may be one person that's going to receive child support or and spousal support, and there's one person that's going to pay child support and pay spousal support. There may be a person that doesn't understand the taxation difference between the two. So if you're receiving spousal support, but most of that money is going to be spent on the children, then you need to make sure that that's calculated correctly because child support is not taxable to the receiver. Is alimony taxable? But alimony is taxable to the receiver and the person who is paying alimony can write it off. So we have to be so very careful. it has to be careful. specified, and you want it specified. It has to be specified, and you want to make sure that if it's for the children, then make sure that it is in the category of child support. Okay, and, and then there's lots to consider going into this. Mm -hmm. Your assets, whatever you may have going into this, your 401k, yes. all of that has yes. to be factored in, correct? Yes, in many situations, if, even if there's one person that feels like that they're going, to, they're, they're taking the load of it, but they don't take the time to get a proper calculation of it. Say you're giving half of your pension to your soon-to-be ex-spouse, but you didn't get a calculation of that pension, then that's a problem because you may work another 20 years and you've agreed to a pension 20 years later. So you should calculate it at the time of divorce so that you know that only this portion of my pension is rightfully half theirs or 25% there, so whatever the agreement is, has to be based on that point in time. It has a cutoff point that's there, right. right there. When the that's, divorce is done, you, no more half of my pension. That's right, and if your employer will not do it for you, like the military will do those things. Government employees have um, certain services for those, that type of calculation. If you're working somewhere and they don't calculate it for you, you have to make, or please seriously consider, making the investment of getting those calculations done getting an appraisal done on the property that you may be splitting. If, some, if one person in many situations, one person is going to keep the property. You have to understand that if you keep the property, what the taxation will be when you sell it. When you sell it as a single person versus selling it as a married person. Because the capital gains are totally different. That's right, <laughs> that, yeah, so um, taxation becomes a big issue. But the biggest problem Cheryl ends up that you're, that people don't think it through. They don't do the simple step of thinking about what will be my budget after divorce. <laughs> Even if we start with, and, and people in general don't, 60% of the people out here don't do a budget. So imagine if you're in this stressful situation, it can be where you don't do a budget for after the divorce. When, when you look at the numbers, women, their income tends to go down over 40% after a divorce, men over 20% after a divorce. That's just the averages overall. That's a big change in income for both. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that you're in tune with 
how to do a budget for after divorce, even so far as the insurances and making sure that the insurances get paid, health insurance, life insurances are very important. Lots of great tips today. <laughs> Thank you. A lot more to talk about as always. Thanks, JB. Thank you so much. JB Bryant offers money seminars every Wednesday at noon, Sundays, 3 p.m. for business owners. The workshops are free, but pre-registration is required. We'll put a link for more information on our website, wtvr.com slash VTM.